In this video, we will discuss about the proliferative diseases of the breast. Firstly, we will see proliferative diseases without atypia. Then we will study proliferative diseases with atypia. So proliferative disease means that it is associated with epithelial proliferation and without atypia means that these proliferating epithelial cells do not show atypical morphology and as they do not show atypical morphology, they are not true precursors of cancers. So if we talk about their association with cancer, we firstly have to understand that in proliferative disease without atypia, the cells are polyclonal proliferations. Now what do we mean by polyclonal proliferations? You have often read in your general pathology that cancers are monoclonal. So what is that a monoclonal means? Let's first understand this. So for example, if this is a cell, if these cells undergo mutation and starts dividing rapidly, then there is multiple group of these cells. These cells are called clone. So they originate from the mutated variant of a single cell and as they arise from the mutated variant of a single cell so we can say these are monoclonal but polyclonal means that the problem does not arise in a single cell rather multiple group of cells have started their proliferation so in epithelial changes without atypia same is the case here that the cells are polyclonal proliferations rather than monoclonal proliferation so as they are polyclonal they are not true precursors of cancers but still they are predictors of increased risk. Why they are predictors of increased risk? Because you know the chances of mutations are greater in those cells that are dividing rapidly. So even though these are not true precursor of cancers but still they are proliferating rapidly. So these cells have chances to undergo mutation and can result in cancer later on. So they are predictors of increased risk but by in themselves they are not true precursors. Now let's discuss the morphological changes in proliferative disease without atypia. So for morphological features of proliferative disease without atypia, you have to learn four keywords. Epithelial hyperplasia, sclerosing adenosis, papilloma and complex sclerosing lien. All these four are the examples of proliferative disease without atypia. And we will discuss the morphological or histopathological features one by one. The first term is epithelial hyperplasia. It simply means that there is increased number of epithelial and myoepithelial cells. So you know that the ducts or SNI are lined by a basal layer of myoepithelial cells that are spindle shaped and epithelial cells. So in epithelial hyperplasia there is increased proliferation of epithelial and myoepithelial cells and you see multiple layer of these cells and the lumen is small in size and the lining or basement membrane is lined by multiple layers of cells. So this is epithelial hyperplasia. And remember that as we are discussing proliferative disease without atypia, so in this hyperplastic group of cells, there will be no cell with atypical morphology. So this is epithelial hyperplasia. The second keyword is sclerosing adenosis, which is also an example of proliferative disease without atypia. What happens in sclerosing adenosis? The keywords are sclerosis and adenosis. The word sclerosis means hardening. So you will see stromal fibrosis that sometimes compress the lumen of SNI. So as sclerosis mean hardening, there will be an abundance of eosinophilic connective tissue, eosinophilic fibrous tissue that will sometimes compress the lumen of SNI. And what does the word adenosis mean? Adeno mean glands and osis mean excess of something. So there will be increased number of SNI. Now as there are increased number of SNI and as there is a lot of fibrosis also. So sometimes this thick fibrous tissue compress this overpopulated group of SNI and compress it into strand or sheet of cells just like this. So for example, if this is an SNS, then the lot of fibrous tissue that is growing around it is compressing this into sheets or strands like this. This pattern often mimics invasive carcinoma. So this resembles like invasive carcinoma because in invasive carcinoma of breast, there is resemblance, there is the morphological feature of sheets or strands of cells. So this can create a false resemblance to this, but overall sclerosing adenosis itself is not a cancerous lien. So for sclerosing adenosis, you will see fibrosis and you will see increased number of SNI that are being compressed by this fibrous tissue into these strands of cells. Now the third morphological change is papilloma. Papilloma may arise in large or small ducts. 
so you know that these are terminal ducts and these terminal ducts open into SNI. Later, these terminal ducts open into larger ducts, ducts of larger caliber. So, these papillomas not only develop in smaller terminal ducts, rather they can arise in the large ducts as well. And the keyword for the morphological features of papilloma is papilla plus oma. Papilla means fingers. So, in papilla you will see multiple branching fibrovascular cords that appear as finger-like projection. So, you can see this is a finger-like structure that is composed of fibrous tissue and blood vessel. This fibrovascular tissue is appearing as finger-like projections. So, this is papilla. So, you will see multiple branching fibrovascular cords. And oma means excess or proliferation of something. So, you will see epithelial hyperplasia and apocrine metaplasia frequently. So, in papilloma, you see finger-like projections of fibrovascular cords and you will see epithelial hyperplasia and apocrine metaplasia in the epithelial cells. For example, here you can see that these epithelial cells have multiple layers, they are proliferating. But still, as we are discussing proliferative disease without atypia, so you will not see atypical epithelial cells. Now, the last keyword is complex sclerosing lien. Complex sclerosing lien is also an example of proliferative disease without atypia. So, in complex, as the word complex implies, you will see components of epithelial hyperplasia, papilloma and sclerosing adenosis. So, in complex sclerosing lien, this, you will see a complex or mixture of all three of these, hyperplasia, papilloma and sclerosing adenosis. And one example of this complex sclerosing lien is radial scar. In radial scar, you will see a central nidus of entrapped glands in a highly nice stroma. So, you can see there is central nidus of these glands that are entrapped in the fibrous or highly nice stroma and these glands are radiations projecting in the stroma. So, some part of these glands is projecting into the stroma like radiations. So, this is complex sclerosing lien that is manifested as radial scar. Radial scar is an example of complex sclerosing lien. So, these are the morphological changes in proliferative disease without atypia. And another small point which is to be discussed that these papillomas which we have just discussed clinically present as serous or bloody discharge from the nipple. They may appear as palpable masses and radiographically they appear as densities and calcifications. So, this is all about proliferative disease without atypia. Remember the four morphological examples, epithelial hyperplasia, sclerosing adenosis, papilloma and complex sclerosing layer. Now we will discuss proliferative disease of breast with atypia. Proliferative disease again means that the cells are proliferating and atypia means that there will be cells of atypical morphology. Now the first point to understand is that these lesions are clonal proliferations and hence they show increased risk of cancers. What are clonal proliferations or monoclonal proliferation? Again, as I have taught, if there is a single cell and these cells undergo mutation, then it will result into a group of cells that are all arising from actually a single cell. So, these can be called as monoclonal. So, in this disease, that is proliferative disease with atypia, there is monoclonal proliferation of an abnormal or diseased cell. And as these are proliferations of an abnormal, diseased or mutated cells, so they will be atypical in their structure and in their morphology. Hence the name proliferative disease with atypia. So there is increased risk of cancer in such lesions. So for morphology, you have to subclassify this proliferative disease with atypia into atypical ductal hyperplasia and atypical lobular hyperplasia. The main difference is that atypical ductal hyperplasia mimic or resemble ductal carcinoma in situ and atypical lobular hyperplasia mimic or resemble lobular carcinoma in situ. We will discuss these lesions later. Now the morphological change in atypical ductal hyperplasia can be simply remembered by its keywords. Hyperplasia means increased number of cells, increased number of epithelial cells. Atypical cells means there will be cells that resemble atypical Atypical means that cells will have atypical structure or morphology. Now, duct means that this lien resembles ductal carcinoma in situ. What is ductal carcinoma in situ? We will discuss in another video. But here, the word duct will remind that the morphology resembles ductal carcinoma in situ. Let me roughly discuss what it is. Ductal carcinoma in situ is actually a lien in which there are in which there are atypical cells, 
but these cells do not invade the basement membrane. So similar to that, atypical ductal hyperplasia does not invade the basement membrane. But what is the difference between atypical ductal hyperplasia and ductal carcinoma in situ? The main difference is that in atypical ductal hyperplasia, the atypical cells partially involve the duct, while in ductal carcinoma in situ, it usually fully involves the duct. Similarly, in atypical lobular hyperplasia, there will be hyperplasia that will be manifested as increased number of epithelial cells. The cells may be atypical in their morphology and lobular means that this atypical lobular hyperplasia is a precursor lien or it resembles lobular carcinoma in situ. But what is the difference between this lien and lobular carcinoma in situ? The difference is that in atypical lobular hyperplasia, the atypical cells do not involve more than 50% of ACNI within the lobule. But in lobular carcinoma in situ, it will invade, it will involve more than 50% of the ACNI. So the difference is just in the magnitude. So this is atypical ductal hyperplasia and atypical lobular hyperplasia, both of which are examples of proliferative disease with atypia.